Wonderful. Uh, this is not my first time. That means I came before you. <laughs> but we thank God for the progress the people of God are making here. I will pray that their hands will continue to go up and up in Jesus' name. Uh, I've been to Yalimosho, I've been to Akonjo, now we're in Ipaja. I'm looking forward to coming to Ayobo Church. And then the Dopemu Church. I hope uh, you are ready for me to come very soon. I hear that your building is going up and up. It will get up soon. Yeah. But something will come out of your pocket. Yeah. Put your hands in your pocket and bring it out. Wonderful. The Lord bless everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray them from Agege and from Ikeja, from Alimosho, everywhere. We thank the Lord that we are here and we have a full house and people outside. And the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for our workers. Thank you, Lord, for the provision you are making for us in every group. And Lord, we pray that every group will have new life in them in Jesus' name. Supply all our needs. Let your work prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We will not be weary. We will not be tired. We'll move on until your work is done to perfection in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself in every life tonight. Bless your people so we can be channels of blessings to other people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can have your seat. We're coming to Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. And we're reading from verse one Exodus chapter 5 verse 1 and afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh thus says the Lord God of Israel let my people go thus says the Lord God of Israel let my people go that they may hold the feast unto me in the wilderness then in chapter 7 chapter 7 Coming to verse 16. Chapter 7 verse 16. And thou shalt say unto him. The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee saying. Let my people go. You see that again. Let my people go. That they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold he that show the wouldest not hear. Chapter 8. Verse 1. In chapter 8, verse 1, the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. It's repeated over and over. Because Pharaoh had not listened, he had not carried it out. And until he listened to the Lord, until he obeyed, until the people are released, it's going to keep on repeating that. Let my people go. Chapter 9, verse 1. In chapter 9, verse 1, then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh. Tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. As we look at this word of God, and we look at the injunction, we look at the charge, we look at the challenge, we see what God wanted Moses to do. And this was the assignment given to Moses, was to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Any other thing will not do. Any other involvement will not do. Any compromise will not do. And the Lord had said it over and over again, telling Moses to tell Pharaoh. What did he say you should tell him? Say it like your preachers now. Let my people go. At the time of Israel's emancipation, as that time drew near, God's compelling charge was unmistakable. Let my people go. Heaven's expectation, 
God's authoritative demand. A servant speaks duty and the unchangeable responsibility laid upon Moses and Aaron, the leadership in Israel, was this condensed into one statement. Let my people go. Every other thing under heaven was considered only in reference to this word. Let my people go. Every activity, anywhere, everywhere on earth at that time, had significance only as they related to this. Let my people go. Pharaoh's rule. Pharaoh's leadership, Egypt's existence, Egypt's happiness was hinged and based on this. Life only had meaning for them, both the leaders of Egypt and the citizens of Egypt had only purpose, one purpose, to release the children of Israel. Let my people go. Nothing else will do. And the only thing heaven was thinking about and the only thing heaven evaluated on earth at that time for Egypt is just this single thing. Let my people go. They might go into different areas of progress, different areas of production, different areas of civilization. God will say, that's all right, but the one thing necessary that still must be done is let my people go. At this time now, as Christ's coming draws near, nothing on earth is as important as this divine imperative. You see, the world is getting involved in this and this and this and that. Even the church, the church at large. The church is putting hands here putting authority here, lending their voice there, doing quite a lot of things. But you know, as Christ is coming now, the only thing that is important to God and the only thing that is essential that must be done, even if all these other things are not done, the only thing is, let my people go. Tonight we are looking at this message, the divine challenge for the present hour. The divine challenge for the present hour. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, reading from verse 9. Acts chapter 19, verse, chapter 18, verse 9. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I have much people in this city. They were not born again yet. I have them. I know them. If somebody will go to them and talk to them, they will become my people. They are oppressed. They will become my people. They are sinful. They will become my people. They will have eternal life. They will become my people. I gathered them as the bride for my only begotten son. They'll be my people, for I have much people in this city. Look at this, look at verse 10 again, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. I thought there'll be an Alima Shaw, Amen. And a Paja, Amen. The Lord will protect you, He'll preserve your life. Nothing can touch you until this assignment is done. I want you to remember, there were magicians in Egypt. They couldn't touch Moses until the work was done. He will do it. And then Pharaoh threatened him. Don't see me anymore. Don't come to me anymore. The next time you see me, you are dead. He couldn't do that because this assignment that God had given to Moses must be done and yours will be done. Yeah. Your life is secured yeah. and it builds a wall of fire around you and nothing can hinder that life, cut short that life because you are the person God is saying, look at this city, I have much people in this city, go and now so the powers that be 
let my people go. Verse 10 again, I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. We're looking at this divine challenge today. The divine challenge for the present hour. I'm dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the unalterable demand of the Almighty. The unalterable demand of the Almighty. This cannot be altered. This cannot be changed. God cannot change his mind and say, All right, because things are difficult. All right, because Pharaoh is resistant. All right, because the Egyptians are not ready to release them. I'll then have a plan B, an alternative. There's nothing, there's no other thing. This is the divine challenge and it must be done. The unalterable demand of the Almighty. Point number two, the undeniable declaration of our advocate. Our advocate is our savior, our redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the un undeniable declaration of our advocate. Point number three, the unchangeable devotion of his ambassadors. The unchangeable devotion of his ambassadors. Number one, the unalterable demand of the Almighty. We're coming back to Exodus. Exodus chapter 5 again. Just to refresh our memory and to remind ourselves this demand of the Almighty and this charge of the Almighty and this commission of the Almighty. It says in chapter 5 of Exodus verse 1 and after what Moses and Aaron sent went in and told Pharaoh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, Shout it out. Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. That was the assignment that God had given to Moses. Hold on a minute. What else could Moses be doing? Profitable? Useful? Important? Essential? He could do a lot of things because you understand, Moses was an educated man. Moses was mighty in word and mighty in deed. He was learned in the land of Egypt. He actually studied in the royal palace. And they were preparing him to become the emperor, the king, after this Pharaoh, after the Pharaoh that knew him had died. But the Lord had something for him. And what could he have been doing? He could have been negotiating with Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, you know what? There's oppression in the land. You know what? There is a hardship in the land. Why don't you lessen the hardship on the people? That would be a good thing, you know? But that will not measure up to the demand of God. Even if Pharaoh were to lessen their body, that's not enough. It's not to remain in Egypt and then have an easier life, a lesson body. The challenge still would be, let my people go. Moses could have gone to Pharaoh and he could have said, you are here in the palace. You don't know what's going on on the field. These tax masters are cruel. The wicked, the oppressive. And Moses could have negotiated with Pharaoh to make those tax masters compassionate and considerate. That would be a good thing, but that wasn't going to be enough. It's not the compassion of the task masters we need. It is not the release from the oppression and then to still stay in Egypt we need. It is let my people go. Moses could have gone to negotiate with Pharaoh and he could have said, you're not paying these people. You're enslaving them. And we're going to raise up a labor union. And that labor union is going to defend the rights of these people. If that were possible, if that were done, that Pharaoh will then come to the agreement, I'll pay them their wages and I'll make them prosper. Prosperity in Egypt was not the goal of God, was not the challenge, was not what God wanted. It is, let my people go. 
They could improve also the labor conditions. You see the, the labor conditions. The other time a wall fell and you know some Israelites were killed. What are you doing about that? The other time uh, they were building your pyramid and as they were building your pyramid you know they had some accident while they were in service and you didn't do anything about that. Now we're going to negotiate with you to have good labor conditions and workers benefits all that would have been good but it will not measure up you see we can spend our lives we can spend our time on things that are good but that's not the divine mandate it is not the divine challenge and it could have secured a review of the laws and the edicts in egypt to favor the children of israel all these will not fulfill God's demand. God's demand is final. It's authoritative. We say it is peremptory. That means unchangeable. It's there and it's firm. And the only thing Pharaoh could do is not to lessen their difficulty. It's not to lessen their burden. It's not even to pay them money. The only thing that God wanted is let my people go. What if Moses had looked at the condition of the people? If Moses had healed all the children of Israel in Egypt, says, well, let Pharaoh do his own, let me do my own. Pharaoh may try to impose all these things on them, and the people are weak, and they are sickly, and they have the power of God. What I'm going to do is to develop a healing ministry. And these people will be healed even if all the Israelites, young and old men and women, were totally healed in the land. That was not the commission. Let my people go. Moses could perform needed miracles for everyone in Egypt. They wanted this, it's done. Wanted that, it's done. As long as they were in that land, that wasn't what God wanted. He said, Let my people go. Moses could have said, I'm an Israelite and I'm educated. Education is very important. Knowledge is power. If I, can, if I cannot convince Pharaoh that these people should leave Egypt, all right, I'm going to get an educational plan, educational policy. And I'm going to push that through. If uh, Egypt had a parliament or they had a senate, I'm going to go through that senate and I'm going to make sure that Israelites are educated in Egypt. That might be a good thing because education is good. But that will fall short of what God wanted. He might secure employment package. It might secure prosperity package for them in Egypt. It might even give the Israelites laws to make them morally righteous. They dress this way, they dress that way, and they are moral, and they are good, and they are nice, and everybody will know that they are different as long as they are in Egypt. That's not the will of God. Let my people go. I've told you all that to, to tell you this. The church gets into this plan for people, but they're not getting them out of the world, out of darkness, out of sin, unto the Savior. They have this package for them. There are programs by churches. There are programs by denominations, even by deeper life too, to help people have a better life. That's good. But that's not the edge. Let my people go. And to make them raise up happy families, good families, better families, that's good. That's not the goal. Let my people go. And to help educate the younger people. And as they're educated, then they go into leadership here, leadership there. They're the leaders of tomorrow. And they will occupy this position, that position. That's great. That's not the goal though. The goal is let my people go. Christ is coming and he's developing. He wants his bride out of the world, out of sin, out of darkness. In short, he wants souls to be saved and he wants them to get together in a built and a planted church. That's his goal. Upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
That is the central theme. That is the challenge he has given to us. Any other thing we do, those things are good if they help us to fulfill the demand of God and the mandate and the challenge he has given us. Let my people go. They will come out. Out of sea to the Savior. Out of Egypt to the promised land. If the people don't get to the promised land, there is, we're wasting our lives. We're wasting our resources. We're wasting everything we've got. What he said is, Moses, I'm raising you up for just one thing. Just one thing. Don't deviate. Don't be diverted. Don't be sidetracked. Go tell Pharaoh. You don't have anything to do with the Senate. Anything to do with their parliament. Anything to do with their labor. Anything to do with anything they're doing. I'm sending you for just one thing. No single Israelite must remain in the land of Egypt. You're not getting a, an easier policy for them. A better policy for them. You are telling them, let my people go. And that day eventually came they went out of Egypt. And the time is coming. The people of God, those that Jesus died for, they will hear the word. They will respond to that word. They will come out of Egypt and out of the world in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. Exodus chapter 3 verse 8. I am, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. That's it. That's it. There's no alternative. And there's no alteration. That's what he wanted. And then he goes on to say, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites then in verse then in verse 10 it says come now therefore I will send thee unto Pharaoh come now Moses I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of Israel tell me the rest out of Egypt, out of Egypt. Moses never forget that. And thank God, he never forgot. He knew the reason God raised him up is just for this one thing. How many people who are Christians, how many people who are ministers, they leave the real thing God has given us to do. And they do this good project, wonderful. This wonderful thing, that's great. That wonderful thing, the only problem here is that we have forgotten the real mandate. We have forgotten the real challenge. Let my people go. Look at chapter 6, Exodus chapter 6. Verses 6 and 7, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, I will bring you out. I am the Lord, I will bring you out. He didn't say, I will lessen your body in Egypt. Uh -uh. I will heal you in Egypt. No. I will prosper you in Egypt. No. I'll make these Egyptians to understand. I've given you wisdom, I've given you power, and you're going to demonstrate that in Egypt. No. It's goal, it's challenge, it's authoritative demand, and it's declaration is that I will bring you out from under the bodies of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretch out hand and with great judgments. Verse 7, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be unto you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you, tell me, out from under the bodies of the Egyptians. And you'll see the way God repeatedly said, out of, out of, out of. And if you're a minister, if you miss that, and there you are concentrating on improving the conditions of the people, and you are improving this and improving that, and then we're having meetings together, how, how a sinner can have a better family, how a sinner can love his children, how a sinner can love his wife, how a sinner can get a good job, and then all this small-scale business that you can do in this time of recession, 
if we do that and through that we bring them out that's good but if we do that and we stop there we've wasted our lives we've wasted our resources because the intention of god and the challenge of god and the charge he had given them and the mandate he had given them is that you'll bring them out of egypt and you'll bring them into the land that is flowing with milk and honey if that is what he has given us to do we're going to concentrate on that any other thing we do will be all right, provided we tailor that thing to bring them out of Egypt. Any other help we give will be all right, provided we, we channel that help to bring them out of Egypt, out of the hands of Satan, out of sin, and we bring them into the kingdom of God, and they are saved. Not only that they are saved, we get them into the family of God, and they are all united together in a church that is glorified. God in truth and righteousness we're coming to Exodus chapter 12 Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 Exodus 12 verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses uh, where ye are. And when I see the blood, tell me, church. And when I see the blood, tell me for yourself. Evil will pass over you. Calamities will pass over you. And all that evil angel going to kill all those people in the night will pass over you in Jesus' name. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. But what if, uh, you know, death passed over them, angels of uh, death, evil passed over them? If that is all, no, that will not be enough. Look at verse 37. Verse 37, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sokoth, about 600,000 of foot that were men beside children. They came out. I said they came out. Those sinners who are going to hear the word of God, they're coming out in Jesus' name. Look at verse 41. Verse 41, and it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the host of the Lord, tell me, all the host of the Lord did what? went out from the land of Egypt. That's it. That's it. They went out from the land of Egypt. You know all those miracles that uh, Moses performed? Uh, water turned to blood. Well, this is the final result. And all the frogs that came, this is the final result. And the protection of the children of Israel from the darkness that over, 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 overrode uh, Egypt, this is the result. That they came out of the land of Egypt. We're coming to Leviticus chapter 11 verse 45. Leviticus 11 reading from verse 45 for i am the lord that bringeth you up out of the land of egypt to be your god ye shall therefore be holy for i am holy you see the intention of the lord he said i am god and the way he described himself is that i had a mandate I had a challenge, I had a charge, I had a commission. I was going to bring you out and I brought you out unto myself. Deuteronomy chapter 6, we're reading from verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 23. Chapter 6, Deuteronomy verse 23. And he brought us, if you are there, what did he say there? Uh, verse 23, chapter 6, verse 23. I'll wait a little for you. I've waited enough. Are you there? Deuteronomy chapter, verse what? Okay, okay, you are there now. And he brought us, tell me, out. This, but look at this, that he might bring us, tell me, in, and to give us the land which is where to our fathers. 
You see the point there? And they rejoiced in the fact that this commission of the Lord was done. And they said, he brought us out. They said, that's not enough. He didn't just bring us out to stay at the periphery of Egypt. And then still overlooking Egypt, he made us go away from them and is bringing us in. He brought us out. As we go, that's what we're telling them. Come out of your sin. Come out of darkness and come to the Savior. Come to the light. And he brought us in. He'll bring them in in Jesus' name. Look at verse 24. And the Lord commanded us to do all all these statues to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might that he might preserve us alive as it is this day he'll preserve you alive once you are willing to do what he has called you to do and you're not going to be diverted here diverted there you're not going to be sidetracked with some good good things and then you forget the real challenge he'll preserve your life we're reading from Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 50, and I'm reading from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 50, we're looking at verse 6. It says, my people have been lost sheep. My people have been lost sheep. It said, they are my people because of the covenant I had with Abraham. They are my people because I said I will save them. But now they are lost. Now that they were lost, that's why Jesus came. And Jesus told his own disciples, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What was he telling them? You are lost again. You are lost in sin. Come, come out. It's still the same message. And uh, that message he has given to us, and we're going to declare that truth even to his people today in Jesus' name. And the people of God will come out of sin. They'll come out of evil. They'll come to the Savior. They're coming to the kingdom in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the undeniable declaration of our advocate. The undeniable declaration of our advocate. First of all, let us identify the advocate. The advocate. It has 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. My, my little children. These things have I, have I write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. We have, tell me, an advocate with the Father. What's his name? Jesus Christ the righteous. An advocate with the Father is Jesus Christ the righteous, and He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of the whole world. The point now is this potentially, potentially, all the people of the world, they are now His people. By redemption, by His crucifixion. By his sacrifice, he has now shed his blood that whosoever will hear of salvation, understand salvation, call upon the Lord for salvation, he'll be saved. Potentially, there are his people. The children of Israel, they were under bondage, but he said, they're my people. And the people in the world, they're under bondage, but potentially, they're his people. The children of Israel, they were in oppression, under oppression and in darkness in the religions of Egypt. But he said, let my people go. The people who are in the world, Jesus died for them and is a redeemer, is an advocate, is a savior. Because of the sacrifice he made for them, they are his people. That's the reason why he's saying, let my people go. The undeniable declaration of our advocate. We're coming to Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. We're looking at verse 1. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, the Lord said unto Pharaoh, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh 
Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, tell me, let my people go that they may serve me. Have you noticed that God did not give any other message to Moses? This one must be done. This one must be done. There are people, God has spoken to us. This is what to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Bring them out of Satan from under the tyranny of the devil. And they have not obeyed that. And they are saying, God speak to me. God speak to me. He has no other word. He has no other word. This is the word. When this is done. Have you noticed that God did not give the law? to the Ten Commandments he didn't give it to Moses while they were in Egypt because the first thing is let my people go have you noticed that all those ceremonial things were not delivered unto Moses the first thing is let my people go all the descriptions and the details of the tabernacle that you find in Exodus later you don't find that here the first thing is let my people go the arrangement of the children of Israel the ones on the east and the west and the north and the south and the, and the Levites do you of the arrangements was not given to Moses the point is the wonderful thing now the important thing now is let my people go have you noticed that you know the ability to bring water out of the rock it wasn't there yet because this one must be put in place this one must happen first let my people go have you noticed there's no manna at this time now because the first thing is let my people go you see many people don't understand the order in which God works and does things when he says this is the commission this is the mandate and this is the charge let my people go when that is done all the other things will follow seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then after that all these things shall be added unto you let my people go they will come out chapter 9 chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 1 then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. You see how God is repeating to man. Over, look at verse 13, chapter 9, verse 13. The Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. And say unto him, Thus says the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. The people of God, those are the people now at our own time, the people Jesus died for. We're looking at uh, Psalm 22. Psalm 22. And let's look at this psalm. We call it a Messianic psalm. This is a psalm that was written uh, for Christ. That is, this will happen to Christ. And these will be the words that Christ will speak. Chap chapter 22 of the Psalms, verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Who said that later? I said, who said that later? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Why art thou far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Look at verse 16. In verse 16, for dogs have come past me. The assembly of wicked of the wicked have enclosed me. Look at this. They pierce my hands and my feet. Who did that happen to? Jesus Christ. That did not happen to David. This is written in anticipation of Jesus Christ coming to die for us on the cross. In verse 17, I may tell all my bones they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lords upon my vesture. Who did that happen to? Jesus Christ. I read that. Read this. Look at verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is governor among the nations. That's why we say potentially all these people in all the nations, potentially they are his people. And today he sends us with the message and he says, let my people go. The first part of uh, chapter 22 says he died for us. 
and he died for everyone and because he died for everyone we're not going to inform them and as we inform them they'll become the people of God Isaiah chapter 42 Isaiah chapter 42 reading from verse 6 Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6 I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thee and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee a covenant for the, of the people for a light of the Gentiles a light of the Gentiles this was spoken concerning the Lord Jesus Christ that he will become the light the light of the world and so the people of the world all these Gentiles and nations do not belong to Christ potentially and once we tell them although they are still in darkness Although they are still in Egypt, although they are still in the world, although they still don't know the Lord now, but where to go? Let my people go, that they may serve me. And as they come, they become in reality the people of God. Potentially now, people of God, but as they come, repent and believe, then in reality they become the people of God. Look at verse 7, to open the blind eyes, to bring them, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16. We're reading from verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19 O Lord my strength my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth as the Israelites came out of Egypt and God said, I brought them out to bring them in unto myself. The same thing will happen to the Gentiles in all the cities, in all the towns, in all the villages. Because it says, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall, and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. That is, those Gentiles, they come to confess that we followed religion, the religion that could not save. But now, we come to thee, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23 from verse 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries, whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their fold, and it shall be fruitful and increase. I thought you'll say amen. amen. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall there be shall, that shall be lacking, says the Lord. The time has come for fulfillment. And I'm Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Tell me. I can't hear you. I'll read it like you're preaching. But look at that. His people, his people, they're still in sin. They're still in sin. He shall save his people. From their sins. That means then the people Jesus died for, although they are still in sin, God is seeing church, ministers, members, soul winners, evangelists, go and tell them, they are my people. I died for them. They don't belong to Satan. Although they are serving Satan, although they are in Egypt, although they are in darkness, potentially they belong to me because I'm their redeemer. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. Luke chapter 19 reading from verse 10. It says for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Is come to seek and to save that which was lost Luke chapter 11 verses 21 and 22 Luke chapter 11 
verses 21 and 22 it says when a strong man armed keepeth his palace his goods are in peace but when he's stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoil he's talking about satan keeping the people under bondage and keeping them under lock and key keeping them in the prison but now he's stronger than he jesus christ who comes to destroy the works of the devil and he comes to bruise the hedge of the serpent he has now delivered his people all we need to do now is go and inform the people and go and tell them let my people go that they may serve me and they will come out in jesus name our advocate's declaration is not different from the almighty's demand let my people go god and god and christ the father and the son the almighty and our advocate have the same desire they have the same demand they have the same decree they have the same directed divine directives let my people go now think about this healing the sick and leaving them in the world does not meet up of the challenge delivering the oppressed and releasing the prisoners and leaving them in the world is like releasing the children of israel and leaving them in egypt it doesn't meet up with what the lord has told us teaching morals there are people christians that teach morals there are believers that teach morals there are ministers that teach morals don't do this don't do this don't do this don't do that teaching morals to people to young people teaching morals to your families and teaching morals to our neighbors without bringing them out of the world it doesn't meet the divine challenge it's not just to teach them morals morals without salvation will get them nowhere morals without being born again will get them nowhere teaching them doctrine and leaving them in the world doctrine 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 or teaching them doctrine if moses had just sat with the children of israel teaching them doctrine without bringing them out of egypt that will not be what the lord had called him to do yes we teach doctrine but we teach the doctrine of repentance we teach the doctrine of faith in christ so that they will come out of the world and come out of their sin and then we we'll stop there until they come out we we, we come out we come to them in various angles repentance this way and turning away from sin that way and um, you know getting rid of, tra of transgression this way and talking about jesus who died for them on the cross of calvary until they come out we don't talk about you know the other thing somebody is coming is going there and is teaching them this and teaching them this and teaching them that and is teaching them you know the bible and then they go through the bible the ark of noah and then tabernacle and everything the meaning of melchizedek and meaning of that we don't have anything to do with that now they must come out teaching them doctrine without bringing them out of the land of egypt will not measure up to the demand of the lord educating them educating them you know we have a secondary school we have primary school we have university we have college we have everything if we stop there we're not fulfilling the mandate we educate them for one purpose so that we can get them out of egypt out of the world and make it helping them to raise better families or well, you know a deeper life they have all these seminars and they have all these women fellowships and we tell them how to make this and make this and make that that's all right if it brings them out of the world if it doesn't bring them out of sin out of the world all those uh, you know policies and principles and practices they mean nothing what we want to do is to position ourselves with the understanding that whatever we're sharing with the people of the world it has one goal it has one drive it has one desire get them saved and get them into the church and plant churches and grow those churches we're showing people success principles prosperity principles and we leave them in egypt that's not enough let my people go the people of christ that he died for they must come out of egypt to canaan they must come out of the world to heaven. 
They must come out of sin to salvation. They must come out of isolation to the church family. Let my people go. It's not like, you know, okay, that person there from the, the tribe of Reuben, an individual, go out of Egypt. He goes out. That other one, go out of Egypt, he goes out. You from the tribe of Issachar, go out of Egypt, he goes out. If they all went out and they were scattered, and they were not united together, built together as a family, as the children of Israel together, it will feel no purpose. You know, some people say, all I want to do is, you know, get them saved. I've given them the word of repentance and the word of salvation. Whether they come to the church or not, this is not important. Who said so? Who said so? Jesus is not building up isolated individuals, isolated believers, isolated disciples. He wants those disciples together. That's why he told all of them. He said, now you, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to send the comforter unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. How did they tarry? Separately. How did they tarry? together in the upper room and there were many houses in jerusalem what if this one is starting there this one is starting there that one is starting there when they were all together in one accord it says there's a mighty wind and then tongues like a sapphire came upon them and they began to speak in tongues as the spirit gave utterance and everybody that was being saved he added to the church added to the church added to the church as such as what being saved we need to understand what god is all about and what he wants done and you are going to be involved in jesus name is bringing us out of individualism into the kingdom it's building a kingdom it's building a kingdom it's building a temple it brings that block it brings that block it brings that block and then it builds a temple that's the desire of god and that's the plan of god he will do it through you he'll do it through me and we're going to do it together in jesus name let's go and tell them let's go and tell them and bring them out of the world and we'll bring them into the kingdom of god and this world will prosper in our hands in jesus name point number three now the unchangeable devotion of his ambassadors the unchangeable devotion of his ambassadors any ambassadors at home tonight you are there the lord will use you in jesus name we're looking at second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 18 and all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation what has he given you i said what has he given you the mystery of reconciliation to which that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us, what has he committed to us? The word of reconciliation. Now then, tell me, now they shout it out where ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled unto god for he has made him to be seen the sin offering for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him a, a message our mandate is let my people go exodus chapter 10 exodus chapter 10 we're reading from verse 3 exodus chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 3 in exodus chapter 10 verse 3 and moses and aaron came in unto pharaoh and said unto him thus says the lord god of hebrews how long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me tell me what follows moses don't you have any other thing to say don't you have any other message? Don't you have any other mandate? Don't you have any other charge? No. Until this one is done, we're not moving from that. It says, let my people go that they may serve me. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Go, serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young, Amen. Amen. And with our old, another, Amen. Amen. 
and with her sons give me amen, amen. and with her daughters amen. and with her daughters amen. and with her flock amen. and with her herds amen. where we go for we must hold a feast unto the Lord look at verse 26 the first part of verse 26 it tells us in verse 26 our cattle also shall go with us and there shall not an hoof be left behind there shall not an hoof be left behind no negotiation no compromise no toning down no slowing down and uh, they, they is okay if you will since it's been refusing all this time if some people now are released we'll be talking about others later not a single hoof are we going to leave behind and the lord is telling us the same thing it says going into all the world you are not going to meet any house any street any community any village or any town or any city everybody everywhere in the offices in the markets in the schools in the colleges everybody everywhere in the prison in the hospital everybody everywhere go preach the gospel to every creature and tell everyone let my people go that they may serve me and we're going to do it in jesus Jesus name it tells us in Psalm 68 Psalm 68 we're reading from verse 6 and verse 7 Psalm 68 verses 6 and 7 68 verses 6 and 7 is set at the solitary in families can you read that with me one two three go God set at the solitary in families can you say that again he doesn't want the isolated person to just get saved and then uh, is an individual person. I believe in God, but I'm in my house. I read the Bible, but I'm in my house. I have eternal life, I'm in my house. I believe in Jesus as my Savior, but I'm an isolated, individualistic Christian uh, with, uh, you know, a separate thing for myself. That he doesn't want that isolation. He set uh, the solitary in families. He bring it those that are bound with chains but the rebellious dwell in a dry land oh god when thou wentest forth before thy people when thou didst march through the wilderness sila that means think about that look at verse 11 in verse 11 one two three go everybody the lord gave the word and uh, only the pastors uh, declared it the lord gave the word and only some people in the church they published it what does it say great was the company of those that published it he's giving the word he's giving us the word and the word is let my people go and then you see everyone that jesus died for that's one of them one of god's people they must leave egypt they must leave the world they must come out of darkness and they must come to the lord let my people go they will serve the lord in jesus name look at verse 31 as we do this look at the result Verse 31, verse 31, 1, 2, 3, go everybody. As we do this, because you know now, we're, we're beyond Exodus. We're now going into the plan of God. That he doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants everybody to repent now. Even those Egyptians now, even the Ethiopians now, everybody everywhere, he is stretching forth the hand of mercy, compassion, love, salvation, unto everyone, princess shall come out of Egypt. And Ethiopia shall so stretch out her hand unto God. Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2 we're reading from verse 23 Hosea chapter 2 verse 23 this is so important i can't read without you opening it Hosea chapter 2 what's the verse verse 23 i'm waiting for you Hosea chapter 2 verse 23 if you have opened it can i see your hand okay okay i can go on now it says and i will sow her unto me in the earth unto me in the earth and i will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy 
and I will say to them which were not my people, listen to this, I will say to them which were not my people, tell me, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. I will say to them which were not my people, unbelievers, Gentiles, pagans, heathens, I will say to them now, because I'm going to send Jesus Christ to die for them. And when I say, let my people go, I mean every one of them now. And so you go and announce to everyone, he now wants to save everyone. We're coming to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. We're reading from verse 24. Romans chapter 9. We're reading from verse 24. Romans chapter 9, verse 24. Even us, whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, even us, whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but of the Gentiles, as he saith, also in O.C. That's O.C. Eh? I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. He wants everyone saved. He wants us to tell them. And he wants us to go out with that message. Let my people go. That means then he's giving us this charge. It's a compelling charge. Now in this dispensation, the Gentiles are part of his people for whom Christ died. Bring them out of sin and bring them in to the Savior. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 But she are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you, tell me, out of darkness, tell me what follows, into his marvelous light. You see the same thing there, out of and then into, out of sin, unto the Savior, out of darkness, into the light, out of evil, into the goodness and the grace of God. You understand? Bring them out and bring them in. Bring them out of sin. Bring them in to the Savior. Romans chapter 3, verse 29. Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 29. Romans chapter 3, verse 29. You see the God of the Jews only. You see not also the God of the Gentiles, yes, of the Gentiles also, of the Gentiles also. Let my people go. But you understand, witnessing was result in church planting. Many people didn't realize that in the past. Let's come to this familiar passage of scripture. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, which verse? Verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come, on, up, uh, come upon you. And you shall be my witness, ye shall be witnesses unto me both, number one, tell me, Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You know what he told the uh, believers to do? You'll be my witnesses, number one, in Jerusalem. When they became witnesses in Jerusalem, what happened? A church came up there. Look at chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. You see the Jerusalem church. Acts chapter 11. We're reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 11. We're reading from verse 22. Then the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was where? In Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem. Ye shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem. And when they did that, there was a church there. And then he said, in Judea 
and in all Samaria, in all Judea and Samaria. And when there were witnesses in Judea and Samaria, what happened? A church, you find the church there. Look at Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Anywhere where there are witnesses, where you are witnessing, a church must come up. Look at chapter 9, verse 31. Chapter 9, verse 31. Then, at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. Judea and Samaria churches there and then he said you'll be my witnesses to the uttermost part of the earth uttermost part of the earth Acts chapter 15 Acts chapter 15 verse 41 Acts chapter 15 verse 41 and they went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches so when the Lord said, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. There were witnesses in Jerusalem. They planted church. And then in Judea and Samaria, there were witnesses there. They planted church to the uttermost part of the earth. There were witnesses there and they planted church. And now we need to understand preaching, wonderful. Not enough until churches are planted. Witnessing, great. Not enough until churches are planted. Soul winning, Evangelism, crusades, wonderful, not enough until churches are planted. Healing, miracles, ministry, not enough except churches are planted and established for Christ. And the Lord will use you, use me, use us together. It will be done in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, we're reading from verse 10. Acts chapter 19, reading from verse 10. Acts chapter 19, what verse? Verse 10, and this continued, this witnessing will continue. This preaching will continue. This church planting will continue. I can't hear you, man, from the... It says in verse 10, and days continue by the space of two years, so that, so that, so that, tell me, all they, all they, which dwelt in Asia, heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, all heard, they will hear. You are there, they will hear. I am there, they will hear. You go here, I go there, I reach that, you touch that. They will hear from us in Jesus' name. What's the result of that? All day that dwelt in Asia. First Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 16. Why don't you read the first sentence there? 1 Corinthians 16, verse 19, the first sentence there. The churches of Asia salute you. You see, they had the word, those apostles were there, those preachers were there. And they witnessed, they witnessed until all the people that were in Asia, they heard the word of God. Hearing the word of God, you see the result. The churches, not just one church, churches, multiplication of churches, the plurality of churches. All the churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you. A march in the Lord with, with, with the church that is in their house. Some of the houses, just, they just turn them to church. And, uh, you know, churches everywhere. That time has come. A time of revival. A time of evangelism. A time of soul winning. A time of church planting. A time of church multiplication. And you are going to be part of this. Where are you? You are going to tell the people everywhere you go. Let my people go. They will come out of sin. They will come to the Savior. Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord. Rise up and tell the Lord. You will be part of this. You will be part of this. Your part will not be missing. Your part will not be missing. You see the mandate. And you see the charge. And you see the challenge. Our challenge. The divine challenge for the present hour. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. I'll be part of it.